Welcome to the Total Connect show. My name is Kevin Navani. Mayank, thank you so much for coming to my show. Thanks so much for taking your time. Um, um, yeah, hi, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me. I'm doing great. Uh, and, uh, you know, thank you for hosting me. And uh, it's my honor to be here. Oh, my pleasure. Okay, Mike, I've been uh, following you and, you know, for quite a while and reading your article. Uh, I think you're really speaking out of my soul, uh, that article you wrote. Um, let me see which one was that. Uh, it was like a while ago, like, was it like September 2nd? Is that the article, the date of the article, something like in September? Or was it like last year? Uh, no, I th the, the mythical privacy in the age of Bitcoin. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> It was only like 10, 10 or 12 days ago, two weeks ago at max. Wow. Yeah, okay. Because these are the yeah. issues and topics and questions I've been trying to, dealing, to deal with. And um, um, uh, before, uh, it was a while ago that the two of us, you know, or actually you, you know, put up a, a list of questions and topics we could talk about. And I have, you know, and I had some specific questions to you um, regarding the, let's just, you know, put it... Um, very practically, the the it's about the user friendly, user friendliness, the easiness, the easiness or user friendliness of um, of the coin joining in the Wasabi wallet, and um, I put a tweet out. You know, uh, it was already a while ago, and I think the developers, some or one one of the developers or one of the I don't know uh, anonymous developers, took it a little bit personally because I said there's a lack of empathy on behalf of the, um, I, I got to explain this a little bit in detail so that, you know, it, it's not being misinterpreted. What I meant is not, you know, it's not that uh, the developers that are, you know, who, who are, uh, you know, dedicating and committing their time and resources, energy and their, you know, uh, their sweat and blood <laughs> into the development of the Wasabi wallet, any other kind, you know, whether it be Samurai wallet with the Whirlpool or Wasabi with the CoinJoin. Um, and I'm like, you know, uh, I know the, the needs and desires and wishes of the average person out there because I work with them. I help them, you know, set up the treasure wallet. And even, you know, after so many multiple times explaining to them, the, you know, the, the, the easy steps actually, you know, to, to go through. Mm -hmm. It's still, you know, people are overwhelmed. If, if you're not, you know, if someone is not experienced or doesn't have the technical literacy, you know, the average uh, lit technical literacy, they, they can't deal with, you know, with a, with a, tr with a hardware wallet, let alone uh, mixing uh, for the sake of privacy and fungibility, their bitcoins in the Wasabi wallet. So before I, you know, go on with my rant, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my own, uh, so mm -hmm. do you want to talk about like step by step the the topics we we wanted to cover um, and maybe also interpret or uh, clarify a little bit what we the two of us meant by lack of empathy towards the newbies who are coming right. into Bitcoin trying to become a hodler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's let's start with the lack of empathy issue. I think I, you know, we resonate quite well on that. And uh, you know, uh, a lot of like hardcore developers or someone who has been involved into the Bitcoin space might take that personally for all the wrong reasons. I think uh, it's not pointing fingers. It's not that you are, uh, you know, uh, for example, saying that you know your work is, uh, you, you know, you you're not degrading the level of their work. You are only trying to help them improve the implications of their work, right? So uh, the lack of empathy and it's a, it's a pretty strange, it's pretty strange to me um, why anyone would take that personally when every single one of them had kind of the similar experience when they first joined the space, right? So no matter how much you have been involved in computer science, no matter you know what your experience has been, I'm pretty sure there's no one single person out, out there who kind of like got Bitcoin in one go. Right. So which brings me to the point that when you know that uh, there's a steep learning curve, when you know that it's a less than optimal user experience and uh, when you know that for Bitcoin users, for newbies, you know, there are going to be a lot of challenges starting from actually converting their fiat into Bitcoin. Uh, I, I don't think there's anything that could be taken personally. That, that, I mean, it's all about helping each other out, all about uh, making this uh, the soundest money ever increase its uh, implications and have a far wider reach. So uh, that's what we all, uh, I mean, mean with the lack of empathy towards the newbies. 
Exactly. So, um, all right. Um, now, there's a, there is a distinction between, um, and I think by now it should be clear what is meant by custodial wallet user experience versus the non-custodial wallets. Um, mm -hmm. With all the, you know, uh, with all the, uh, let's say, uh, risks and, and, and dangers, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, um, now that aside, what, what would be, in your words, uh, the what's your perspective? What's your thoughts on on the custodial wallet versus the non-custodial wallets in terms of user experience? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, uh, starting uh, taking a step back, right, and talking about the wider implications of the Bitcoin space. I think coming from the US perspective, like having a US background and you know working only on the UX aspect of things, including Bitcoin and other applications on the blockchain technology. I think the human centric design, which I've been very vocal about where you know the user is kept at the heart and then you build stuff around on the user's expectations, his skill level, his knowledge, right? Design in the Bitcoin and in the blockchain space should aim to you know work on either of either till it achieves one of the two things, either the experience is seamless or the experience is invisible, right? That's it. Like either it's beautiful and seamless or it's, it's non-existent. You, you can't see it invisible and custodial wallets to me fall into the invisible category, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, you're not in control of your private key. You don't even know what's a private key, right? And uh, you don't need to, for example, uh, write down the 24 words, all you need to, you, you are, you're kind of uh, in that same area where you have always functioned, where you, there's a login and sign up button and you, you, know, you're, you enter your password and that's it, right? Now, obviously you can export your private keys and all of that, but that comes at a later stage when you understand what's the meaning of a private key and why you need to have your own private key to be a sovereign individual. And uh, with the with the with the custodial wallets, sure they do have a far 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 superior UX. But you know, on the balance on the spectrum of a good UX versus a good security, they are terrible at security, right? But for example, for newbies coming in, uh, the the you know implications of or the consequences of losing the twenty four words or private key far outweighs using a login and sign up button on something like blockchain.com, right? I'll be honest, blockchain.com was also one of my first wallet, right? And because simply there was too much to learn, right? So you could just Google blockchain wallet, they have a strong SEO, it comes up and you know, you, you just sign in, log in, so it felt familiar. But once you realize, you know, you don't have to learn everything in once, but once you realize, then you can shift from custodial to non-custodial, right? And that realization comes with education. So that's what, Every, not everything can be done with UX, right? So that realization when once you know that you need to hold your private key, if it's not your private key, you're probably going to get stolen, your funds will probably be gone. So, you know, the risk to reward ratio in the UX wallets is, uh, sorry, in the custodial wallets is there, like it's, it's a high risk, but the reward is far superior UX. So until we fix that risk to reward into non-custodial, we'll see a lot of people moving on custodial. Great, great, yeah. Um, so um, let me see. Mm. The other question was, uh, you wrote, you know, in your article, um, something about, um, you know, people prefer, uh, I mean, you, you touched on that, actually, people prefer convenience over safety. Yeah. And, and you said, you know, we've seen that play out over and over in the past. Um, right. You want to go into that because I had a talk with Giacomo Zucco uh, at the Rika conference, and he also it should have been obvious to me, of course, uh, the, the trade off between security, privacy, and convenience. And of course, people mm -hmm. are going always, you know, the easiest path, you know, the most intuitive, easiest path. They just want to, you know, do it, whatever, do a transaction, do it quick, easy, and smoothly. So, right. do you want to talk about, you know, the trade offs and maybe convenience, safety? For sure. I mean, one of the one of the biggest examples where we are seeing that people prefer convenience over safety is when you look at the login with Facebook button, right? That's a massive convenience, right? On one one single device, if you have Facebook logged in, you can log in into every single application out there. But when it comes to privacy, that option probably sucks, right? Now, Facebook mm -hmm. knows every every single place 
what do you have done, which app you use, what do you use the app for, they can track you everywhere. And you know, if you're not running Facebook inside a container, which a lot of people don't, right? If you're not running into an isolated container, it follows you everywhere. If you go back, that's what exactly what the people have done with banks, right? Trusting them for added convenience, right? Trusting them with their money. Uh, because I'm in India right now, uh, there's a news that came out yesterday. I don't know if you know that there's a big Indian bank called PMC Bank. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has like 150 plus branches all over India. No matter how much money you have stored in your bank, it has been ordered by the Central Bank of India to not allow its uh, depositors to withdraw more than $15. Oh my God, that's, that's amazing. Oh wow, wow, wow. Right? I mean, that's super, sense. I mean, this is like, I don't know, beyond words, this is like super censorship <laughs> and, and I don't know, right, confiscation. Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. You know, when, not, not a lot of people realize when they open a bank account, they get into an agreement that they, they might not get their money back, right? We have seen bailouts, but we have not seen bail-ins in the modern history. And I think, you know, with the next recession, it, it is a good probability that we'll see bail-ins this time. So, yeah. uh, and, for, and the other example with, uh, with convenience over uh, safety is uh, this whole notion of cashless society, right? Yeah. You know, it's convenience, you know, you don't have to deal with change. You carry plastic money around everywhere and it's super convenient. Everyone accepts plastic, no need to carry your hard wallets or something like that. Mm -hmm. But now you're you are falling under the prey you're falling in the prayer as a prey to the mass surveillance program of the government right now wherever you spend whatever kind of money the government is following you along you know it knows it can if you have no cash right all you spend is plastic money you can be switched off from the financial system anytime the government wants yeah so that's a trade-off between the convenience and the safety yeah, and this risk right. is going to become exponentially higher in the, uh, I think, in the years to come, or maybe even sooner than expected. Right. The more yeah. you know, all these, uh, you know, the whole geopolitical, or macroeconomical um, factors, parameters fall in place. But you know, that's a story by its, for itself. You are the second, by the way, your second um, uh, designer or expert, or uh, I don't know, can I call you like a UX UI designer too, or, or would you call yourself a developer or? or... <laughs> Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I have a, like a broad areas of interest. So that's where my Twitter bio actually, you know, sits well. It says, thriving at the intersection of technology and arts. So I'm kind of like, I, I sit at the intersection of both the design and the development right in the middle. So yeah, you exactly. can call it whatever yeah. feels right uh -huh. to you. Yeah, yeah, be yeah exactly. because I had a, a while ago it was, yeah. um, let me see, when was that? Um, Patricia Estebao, do you know her? She's like also a, um, a, a UX designer for Bitcoin mm -hmm. and it was a really, um, a really uh, enlightening talk. So let me, let me go back to, our, um, to, our, to, to the list of my, our questions. Uh, in the beginning, I mentioned, you know, the hardware wallet, it's still uh, now, besides the, the risk of having to, especially when it comes to Trezor wallet, the, the, the model one, I'm just going to, you know, name it because, uh, you know, uh, there's no other way to, to describe it. And, and uh, after the last update, I don't know which update it was, 1.8.2, 1.8.3, uh, you, uh, one would have to, uh, if you didn't have already the advanced mode, which you could have been, you know, warned about before even setting up the Trezor One wallet, one would have to, type in the 24 monomic words even though in a random order into the um into the keyboard and eventually into the browser which is i think i mean everybody agrees is highly risky uh what right. if it's you know compromise the whole browser and keyboard and everything so afterwards you know um i had some correspondent i told them about it the security department uh, and they said well there's an advanced mode and i said hell you know you maybe you should Maybe you should, you know, clarify this with your clients or your customers before they even set up, you know, the whole wallet. Right. But, you know, it's sort of an um, educational part, I think, people uh, and the uh, teams of the hardware wallet makers need to be aware of. So what's your take on the hardware wallet, you know, use experience in general? I mean, mm -hmm. don't want to name anything, but, but what's, what's your general take on that? Yeah, to be honest, like there's only like one hardware wallet which I use and I've used that's the Ledger Nano. Okay. Right. And 
Yeah, I, I, it's really hard to get the cold card. I really want to give it a shot, but you know, because I'm constantly changing locations. So you know, and they they have like only one warehouse somewhere in the U.S. I guess. So it's yeah. really hard to get Canada, it. Canada, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you're right. So uh, with the Ledger Nano, uh, they recently supported the ERC20 tokens into the Ledger Live application, right? So far, uh, the experience, I mean, to be honest, I, I didn't have much expectations. I just, I mean, to me, Hardware Wallet is only like a safe place, the safest place you can store your private key and that's it, right? So uh, other than that, it's, you know, you just verify the transaction, you click on the you know the checkbox uh, i mean the the done button to confirm the transaction and that's pretty much it right it, it doesn't serve a whole lot of it doesn't need to serve a whole lot of purpose because that's where the abstraction layers like wasabi wallet or ledger live or my wallet.com and all of that comes in now it's their job to build their interfaces on top of hardware wallets mm -hmm. right so uh because i've been using wasabi with the ledger because wasabi recently came out with support for hardware wallets so far it's been great uh, but where the problem comes in is you can't do coin joins on hardware wallet. Exactly. Right? Yeah, that was my problem, but I found out too late. But <laughs> and then you have, and then on top of that, which which really irritates me is that why is the minimum? Uh, I mean, we don't want to mix up the topics right now, but it's really important. Maybe we can talk about it later. But why is the minimum coin joining amount zero point zero nine now? It used to be like even zero point one, but someone who's like you know, I mean, it's still a lot of money, 0 0.05 Bitcoin, you want to coin join it, you can't, and then you have to wait and accumulate so much until you get the minimum amount on your sure. coin join, I mean, a Wasabi wallet. Uh, it, uh, why is that? Do you, do you understand the reasons? Or, um... I, I think it's, it's, it could be because, you know, maybe there's not enough demand to do smaller coin joins because you need to have peers with, with mm -hmm. that amount to do the coin join. Right, ideally you, you can do a coin join for any amount that is larger than the minor fee of the transaction, right? Mm -hmm. Theoretically, that should be possible, but if there, you don't have peers uh, who want to coin join, let's say at max 0 0.1, right? If you have 0 0.001 as the amount that is sent, like for example, once you do like a one Bitcoin for, for a coin join, you get like, 10 outputs of 0.1 Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. Now, once you do like a 0.1, if you need to do like 0 0.05, right? You would need five outputs of 0 0.01 Bitcoin, mm -hmm. right? And for for players or for users who have big amount, uh, I mean, not big, like uh, amount bigger than $500, right? That would not make sense to have like 500 different addresses. Mm -hmm. Right. So either, I don't know, I haven't actually followed up with that question to anyone from the Wasabi team, but I think that's a good question that if, if you have those users who want to coin join with a very small amount, why can't they have their own dedicated coin join transaction? Exactly. Yeah. But right. of, I mean, yeah, I'm on the other hand, I mean, to be fair, uh, one could do it with the, even though it is still a hassle and very irritating the, the, the duration of the, of the time you have to wait till it processes it. Um, I'm talking about the Whirlpool Samurai wallet and Whirlpool. Mm -hmm. So the, uh -huh. the minimum amount is much, much lower. I think you, you can even choose between 0 0.05 or 0 0.5, 0 0.05. So the denominations right. or whatever, the, the minimum amounts are much lower, right? So um, yeah. even though- <laughs> Or, or you, yeah. can do, you can do that on join market as well, but it has terrible, terrible UX. Yeah, so. yeah. See, it fails again at this, exactly <laughs> yeah. at this very, you know, it's so crucial. I don't, I don't understand why, uh, I mean, do you have the feeling there's enough collaboration and really laser focus collaboration, cooperation and communication between the developers who are, you know, in sort of in the state of mind and the UX UI designers, you think there's a constant mm -hmm. flow of information and communication of what is needed? Mm -hmm. I think I think here in the in the Bitcoin blockchain space, you know, users are treated as second class citizens, right? You know, uh, right? You know, you know, you you want to run your own node, go figure out your steps, right? You want to know why you need to run your own node, you you don't understand it, oh, too bad for you. You know, you mistyped the sent address, too bad, right? So it's it's a very unforgiving space for newbies, right? And Blockchain in its nature is very unforgiving, right? It's permanent, it's, it's eternity, it's forever, right? 
So uh, the whole, uh, like the development st scenario on top of that can really nourish and flourish if, if, it, if it becomes a little less unforgiving to the users, mm -hmm. right? Now that's its job. That's its job. And companies who are doing that and who are realizing that like Coinbase, right? And like Casa, right? Are yeah. the one who are, who are like, who have the maximum user interest, the maximum uh, investor interest and uh, the higher valuations and more profits, right? Yeah. Because they understand that they, the whole value capture can occur at the abstraction layer. Yeah. Whereas the developers think that the value capture lies at uh, the infrastructure layer and the protocol layer, mm -hmm. right? If you can build on top of that, the whole protocol infrastructure that exists today, right? Uh, despite the scaling problems, blah, blah, blah. If you can build something sleek on top of and provide an abstraction to, uh, to a newbie, right? You can capture immense value. Yeah. Right. And the newbie so, doesn't have the time to do, you know, research. I mean, the, the, the newbie, right. it's just interest. The average person is really totally overwhelmed. I know people, whether they're 40 or 65 years old, they still mm -hmm. cannot figure out the treasure. You know, right. I mean, it is, it is not, it's not, it's, you got, that's what I mean with empathy. You know, people, they, these developers, they need to understand what is, mm -hmm. you know, what's the, you know, the, the intellectual or technical literacy level uh, uh, with the average person out there, you know, Correct. I mean, just, Correct. just generating new addresses. I'm, you know, I help them, you know, I help them and say, Hey, you know what, I'll come to you. You know, it's people, friends, you know, rel you know, people who I know. So I, I go to them, you know, and, and to their places and just, just, show it you know for the i don't know 15th time you know because they're so scared that they might do something right. wrong you know so maybe we should you know encourage the the i don't know what to call it the the more efficient flow of information uh, and communication right. collaboration and and right. you know integrate more the ux or ui designers into this you know right. into this process no you're right i and i think you know in crypto we talk a lot about fud right Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is the this is the real fud that a newbie has to experience. Like his his fear, his uh, uncertain, you know, his <laughs> despair. Right? <laughs> that's that's the real. That's the real fud. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Okay. Um, let me see. Um, well, the another point was the uh, the multi sig hardware wallets with uh, UX. Uh, you wanted to talk about uh, which I'm not total. I'm totally not familiar with with Justin Moon's Junction. Mm -hmm. What, what did you mean by right. that? Yeah, I mean, uh, Justin Moon is the exact opposite of Justin Sun, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, he's a great teacher, he's a great developer, and, uh, you know, he has his own Moonversity Bitcoin programming course. So he came up with this uh, sleek UI to have multi-sig hardware wallets, which is a massive improvement over any other solution. So, for example, if you look at CASA Keymaster, right? Mm -hmm. I, when I talked about the value capture at that abstraction layer, right? Not everyone can afford that, right? Yeah, that, and that's they know exactly that. the point I made to them. I said, who's first of all going to afford? I mean, you know, yeah, the middle class, you know, but we're talking about like general population, $300 right. per, right. and then you have to pay yearly, per year, yearly. $300 subscription fee for the purpose of, I don't know, in case you, you lose a key or something like that, or you get a boat accident or something. So you yeah. can somehow uh, get the help, get the uh, support uh, mm -hmm. of, of, of Casa. Is that, is that the issue or, or is that the, is that? Uh, yeah, they act as one of the keys. Like uh, as far as I know, I could be wrong, but last I checked, like, for example, if you're doing a three of three multi-sig, right? One of the key would be Casa itself, mm -hmm. right? So you can be sure that, uh, you know, Casa won't lose its key and uh, they can sign whenever you need them to. But I think it goes beyond that with their whole program, which is like $10,000 a year, mm -hmm. right? Uh, their whole variety of products where they have the node, the key master and all the beautiful things around it. I mean, they provide a far, far, far superior UX. And that's, yeah. the, the, that's, that's what the whole company's purpose is. They have realized that the UX is terrible and they could be charging tons of money and you know, and which is okay, right? They are not forcing everyone to sign up. If you have the money, feel free, right? If you're storing any, anywhere above half a million dollars on Bitcoin, uh, you know, there's no reason to have Casa as, uh, as your custody partner or as your kind of like your banking partner for the Bitcoin space, right? And I think we'd see, we'd see uh, more companies doing that over the coming years. The cost will 
severely go down as more and more people realize that that's where the abstraction, uh, that's where you can, uh, you know, because like Naval Ravi Khan says, uh, you know, society pays you for what it wants, but doesn't know how to get it. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. that's what people are doing with Casa. They're paying Casa huge sums of money because they want that, but they don't know how, how to get it except Casa. Yeah. So they've solved the, the, the necessary required plug and play feature, you know, Correct. because, you know, yeah, we should all have a full note, you know, validate all Correct. our transactions, uh, self-sovereign automatically Correct. by default. So what's easiest, you know, I mean, uh, I've never tried even, I've never even, I don't even have a full note to be honest with you. All right. No, because, this is okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people like, like Peter, you know, he said, you know, uh, I'll be savage hard, hard for this, but I haven't run a full node. And, you know, the prodigies and uh, the maximalists came banging like, what the fuck are you talking about? You don't have a full node? I mean, are See, you even like yeah, running a yeah. Bitcoin podcast? Yeah, this is yeah. a classical lack of empathy. You know, it's like he's right. like honestly, you know, admitting I don't I don't I don't have a fucking clue what I'm doing, you know, Correct. and I, I really I credited a lot of to, to, to this statement. I'm like, yeah, I support you full because I totally feel with you, man. I empathize with you because I'm in the same Correct. position. I've never. Yeah, I could order a casa. It's like for three hundred dollars and just plug and play. Sure, I could do that. But I don't know. Um, so, yeah, so we were talking about Justin Moon's UI, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, what it does is like it provides that kind of like a same level of uh, it's, it's an alpha stage, right? So it provides it's an open source version of kind of the key master, right? So you just plug into your like, let's say you want to do a three, two of three or uh, three of three multi sig, right? You plug all your three hardware wallets into your computer. You download the open source code. Uh, you, you'll see uh, you, you, you can name your multi sig you call it like whatever or ledger mm -hmm. uh, Mike, oh, what I it looks i haven't yeah sorry, sorry. no yeah you just yeah. broke up for a, a couple of seconds yeah okay so uh, let's say you you just plug into your three wallets right and it has a, like a clean ui where you can literally set up like multi sig in like 10 seconds a process which was really hard for newbies as like that that's kind of like providing abstraction in the open source form instead of charging money for it and you know major props for that mm -hmm. yeah that's a great yeah mm. so um what about the yeah we want to talk about monomic seeds and ux improvements trezor's latest shamir backups mm -hmm. what's your take on that yeah, I mean, uh, you know, this this has been a real problem, right? Uh, these 24 words, right? Where do you store them, right? These 24 words, they decide your whole financial future. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you, right? do you bury a hole or what do you, what do you yeah, what do, you, what do people do actually with that? I, right. I really wonder what people do. Do they just, you know, uh, uh, tear it apart and give like one piece to a family member or, what, or do they just, you know, store it in their closet, you know? Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. No, you are right. I mean, tearing it apart and giving like, let's say you have 24 words and you know, uh, you, you 12 words you keep with yourself, 12 words you give, give it to your mom and your mom, um, for whatever reason, she, she, she doesn't care about it or loses it or, you know, gets robbed or, you know, even worse, she dies, right? Yeah. But now what happens to your funds, right? And uh, yeah. Uh, that's where Shamir backups come in, mm -hmm. right? So, for example, you have 24 words, right? Now, what you can do is it's it's almost like a multisig for the words. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense, but what you are saying is that out of the 24 words, you can have eight, eight, and eight words, or like you can create. So, for example, you split the 24 words into eight, eight, and eight, right? Mm -hmm. Now you can program and you can choose your wallet to use two of three shares. A slip containing the eight words is called a share, right? So you create three slips of eight words each. You can program your wallet to, you know, use two of three words. Mm -hmm. So for example, now you, the eight words you keep with yourself, one you give to your mom, one you give to your dad, and your mom um, is careless, she loses it, and you can still recover you because you have set up your words to be two of three um, yeah, makes the sense. shares. Right. Makes sense, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so you can actually like go anywhere to up till 16 shares, I believe, from two to 16. Mm -hmm. So you, you can do all kinds of crazy things. Like if you're having a billion dollars stored in Bitcoin, right? You can 
fly to different locations, keep them in your, one you can keep in your Swiss bank account, one in your Singaporean bank, one in your HSBC in Hong Kong, right? Whatever you can do, but it's, it's a much, much better uh, experience in terms of uh, user experience and as well as security uh, compared to just showing the 24 words on one single piece of paper. Yeah, totally makes sense. Yeah, and I think people are gonna wake up to that, right, <laughs> eventually. Mm -hmm. It, yeah, especially right. when it's, you know, reaches uh, a certain threshold of funds, mm -hmm. uh, people are just going to be forced to do that, right? For the sake of right. I mean, <laughs> sustainable yeah. security. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's still crazy how that, that guy who died, uh, the CEO of a Canadian exchange, I mean, he didn't even use a multisig wallet, right? I mean, just 24 words with one single person. That's a terrible, terrible way to, you know, have access to your funds. I mean, we all do the same, right? You probably have your 24 words words with yourself. I have with mm. mine, but deep down, we know that's a terrible solution. So yeah. that needs to be fixed sooner yeah. than later. Yeah, because what happens in case of fire? You know, my 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 apartment burns down, and <laughs> it's, you you know, uh, it's gone. It's I mean, unless you got it in your, you know, the, what is it called the brain wallet, or <laughs> yeah. you know, make up a story so you can memorize it. I don't know how people are gonna, you know, but this is this is serious stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we talked about the UX of setting up a node. We 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 mentioned Peyton McCormick experience, or right? Um, right? Unless you wanted to add something to that. Uh, then the poor poor mm -hmm. UX preventing by default, that's very important, privacy in BTC, in Bitcoin versus using privacy coins. Poor right. UX. I want to talk, yeah, talk about that. Sure. I mean, uh, you know, when you compare something like using Monero versus, you know, downloading Wasabi and queuing your coins for, let's say, you know, you, you can't do your coin join with $100, but you can use Monero for $100. Mm -hmm. Right? Why even bother with Bitcoin privacy and Bitcoin if you if you just want to transact with let's say hundred dollars, two hundred dollars worth of crypto? Right. So uh, that's where you know privacy coins really shine. Right. I, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of the Mimble Wimble technology. Right. Mm -hmm. Grin is doing that. Beam is doing that. And you know, uh, Grin kind of echoes the same uh, development community around it. Right. Uh, with respect to Bitcoin. Right. Uh, but 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 you know. Uh, Till bulletproofs or something like that is implemented in Bitcoin, we have a long way to go. Yeah. And until it and until it's not right, uh, the only solutions, sound solutions that we have are to, as for my knowledge, are Wasabi and Join Market. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure, we have Samurai, but I think it's an Android-only application, right? Yeah. So yeah, like desktop solutions, and uh, you know, in terms of volume that's been done by Wasabi, it far outweighs Samurai at this point. Right, but even though it, that's not a good indicator, but you know, shows where where which one has more trust of uh, mm -hmm. uh, the people, right? So similarly, join, join market, and well, that's that's where the problem lies. I, I mean, I I with, with join market, you know, there you, you have to literally deal with scripts, right? You 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 have to run Qt, their join market Qt application, which is like has terrible like uh, for lack of better words i mean it's it's beyond terrible ux right i you don't even know what you're doing i mean are you supposed to do a coin join a page on run a tumblr what is a yield generator right and how secure are your funds and everything like like a trail it's it's uh, it has a long way to go but i mean it's a, it's, a, it's a decent project so it's a, it's a beautiful uh, implementation yeah. of maker taker coin joins right and uh, you know the 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 free markets where you know makers have to uh, takers pay for the fees makers make uh, money from takers fee and everyone is essentially privatizing their coins that's a beautiful model mm -hmm. but UX is what is stopping you and I to use that yeah. right and that's where that's what wasabi that's where wasabi came in right it provided an abstraction layer on top of coin joints right even though I still believe that abstraction layers need to take a whole new level to reach a far wider audience, but yeah. that's where they came in. And that's why it's, an, it's a good business, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I don't know if you read the article, Wasabi is making good money, right? It charges a small 0.003% for anonymity set, right? But mm -hmm. they, they, they kind of, even though the intention was not uh, to provide, like even though the intention was to do the coin joins, but the motive was not uh, initially to have an abstraction layer and we will make money out of it. Mm -hmm. That's where the value came. Right. Exactly. So 
Yeah. Which which brings us to the point that still like uh, for newbies, right? And you register for coin joins, you know, I end up uh, labeling and I, stuff like that is so, Ooh. so, yeah, yeah. it's, it's so foreign. It's uh, like they, they kind of feel like they're dealing with the aliens. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So it's, and I think you've done a really a, a great elaboration in your article. I think everybody should read that. It's on medium.com, right? What is it called? Uh, again, the yes, it's on Medium. The, it's on Hacker Noon as well. So yeah, the mythical mm-hmm. privacy in the age of Bitcoin and what we are doing about it. Yeah, uh, right. Exactly. So um, so we actually started working. So I, had, uh, I yeah. actually, you know, uh, two years ago when I graduated from a college, that's where I became a full. That's when I became a full time nom- nomad, right? And I, I I dived deep into Bitcoin and everything. And you know, the world has never been the same for me, right? <laughs> like for everyone, like I <laughs> fell into the rabbit hole, and that's when I started full time traveling. So that's when I made my own venture studio out of my first company, which was a product design studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, specifically for blockchain applications, mm-hmm. right? Because there's a big gap between the technology and the user experience. You know, technology is far outpacing the user experience. Yeah. And that technology is of no use if there's no person who can use it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. For example, to use Lightning right now, even though there are now wallets coming out, but, you know, downloading Lightning, you know, opening, uh, locking your Bitcoin, opening a payment channel and then transacting. I mean, way too complicated. Who's, who's going to do that? Yeah, nobody's so going to do that. That's, yeah. 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 So, For so now, we we are, we're that. still, yeah, we are, as you said, we are, we are far away. We're still in the, you know, long-term hodling phase, which is good. You know, it, 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 is, there's yeah. no coincidence. It takes the time what it needs because I'm myself very impatient. I'm like, when is the accelerated critical mass adoption coming, which I do really want to focus on and do more interviews because I truly, I don't believe in it, but I really understand the network effects and the multiplicating effects of, of critical accelerated mass adoption. And I think once that kicks in the tipping point, I think it's, things are going even technologically and UX, UI terms uh, going to be much, much faster. I mean, I see a much right. bigger picture, but... I don't know. Um, it takes time, so I understand it. But uh, the thing is, uh, I mean, the argument was sort of from uh, I think it was sixty one oh two Bitcoin only guy who said, you know, we are uh, uh, sort of the developers, coders, the programmers. They, you know, they need to work on these kind of things. I'm like, okay, but if they are working internally on it, which is necessary, but then they shouldn't like, you know the image comes over like, or it's marketed once it uh, goes out, whatever wallet it is, Wasabi or whatever people, I mean, people have the perception. I have the perception. Okay. So it's, it's, it's been created and now it should be easy to use, which is not. So they should, you know, stay amongst themselves first before putting it out as a, you know, as, Hey, you know, any kind of newbie can use it. Just, just you know, take your time and right. study it a little bit. And that's not the case. Right. I mean, developers tend to believe that you know their their user their user interface is uh, intuitive, right? Everyone like who's who's building the interface with their own hands would know wh- which buttons to press, right? So, no developer would ever say that their user interface is not intuitive, right? It's only when you give it's only when you uh, give the driving seat to your user and watch him drive the car that you realize, you know, your gearbox is in the wrong position or your indicators are not working or, you know, the accelerator is not how the, the user wanted to drive the car. Right. So once it's, 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 I mean, it's, it's okay to believe that user interface is intuitive, but you should be open to feedback and see how your users react. And one of the good things that Wasabi is, uh, especially, uh, is that Adam, the CTO, right, or the yeah. CDO now that he's, he has stepped down, has actually acknowledged it, right? He opened a GitHub issue saying Wasabi is not user friendly, and you know he was confused. He said, he said, you know, I keep getting these, these, this feedback and reviews that it's not user, it's not user friendly. I don't understand, but please help. So a lot of people, it has a lot of people yeah. coming in, yeah. suggesting yeah. and all of that. Yeah. I had a personal talk with him. I'm going to have, a, I think, on Monday another interview with him. So uh, maybe we'll go a little bit into detail. But it's good that you brought these things up because it's so, so essential. Um, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. how we connected. I just messaged him on Twitter that, hey, Adam, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Wasabi. 
and we'd like to help. Right? Yeah, me uh, too. Me too. But I, I, I myself, to be honest, I can't figure it out, to be honest with you. I mean, I can't figure it out. I, cause, or I lost the patience with it. Not that I'm too, you know, I'm not stupid. I mean, I could, I could study it. I could, you know, learn from it. I can ask, but this is not how it's supposed to be. This is, uh, you know, I want to have a really beautiful user experience. And I think right. it's possible. I truly believe it's possible. Um, for maybe, sure. uh, you know, um, I mean, it, it's one thing if it's technologically uh, too many obstacles I understand that then they, it should it should be sort of compartmentalized first and then mm -hmm. you know create it and then come out with it with the you know with a neat smooth product but right it's the way it is yeah so um, another thing we could talk about is um, we talked about yeah you, poor UX the preventing by default privacy in BTC and Bitcoin versus using privacy coins which by the way I'm not a um, an expert on Monero, is that really like, is it like a solid proof anonymous coin? Monero? Yeah, I mean, uh, it has a it has a dark ledger, but I, I'm a I, I, I'm a bigger fan of uh, Grin, right? Okay. Uh, you know, it's it's fully confidential. You don't have transaction amounts. You don't even have wallet addresses, mm -hmm. right? And uh, it's it's a uh, it's scalable. Like it's a very lightweight. Like the whole Mimble Wimble technology, right? I mean, that's a uh, that's some beautiful cypherpunk piece of uh, wow, okay. uh, document. Yeah, and so, that, and that know, Mimble Wimble is going is planned to be integrated into the Wasabi in the uh, time to come. Or Mimble Wimble is kind of like a, it's a it's a technology that complements the blockchain, right? Uh -huh. So it's a it's it lies at that level. It's not a it's not an abstraction level technology. So Mimble Wimble could be integrated into Bitcoin at some point if. Uh -huh. Uh, Grin, for example, becomes successful. Litecoin is already working uh, on integrating Mimble Wimble. Mm -hmm. And you know who's, who's a big fan of Grin as well? Uh, Jameson Lop, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you remember that, uh, that uh, who, who was it? Gavin or uh, the, the, the second miner with uh, Satoshi? Who uh, Gavin Anderson? The is that Gavin Anderson? Is that his name? I think. Gavin Anderson. Yeah, Gavin Anderson was the coder, but I don't know if he was the person who tweeted running Bitcoin. He was the mm -hmm. second. He was the second miner, right? Uh, yeah. Similarly, uh, when Grin had a fair launch in January, Jameson Lop tweeted running Grin, mm -hmm. right? It, it kind Got of it. echoed really well with the development community. You know, you had anonymous founder, you had uh, open source, you you didn't had you didn't have like uh, minor rewards. And I mean, a lot of people gave him a good beating on because he is supposed to be a Bitcoin maximalist. But I think it's important to open, for example, Anthony uh, Pom Pompolio, right? Is that his correct name? Pomp on Twitter, right? Yeah. Uh, he said, to be honest, I never read a white paper other than Bitcoin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I read that. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Right? <laughs> Which is crazy. But yeah, I mean, that's off topic, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, good point. Um, all right. So um, another important question is how developers can incalculate... This is where you come in, the human-centric design, how developers can incalculate, uh, incalculate human-centric design principles in Bitcoin applications. Right. I mean, one, one of the things here which is very important is to actually hire UI designers. A lot of Bitcoin applications are only being built by developers, right? Yeah. Uh, it's because they, they, from their understanding, believe that it's more of a technological job than a user experience design job, right? So, yeah, but from the very beginning, this is this is, I think, what's what's need to be emphasized. You know, in the process right. of the creation of the ID, even I think the UX UI designers need to be integrated into this correct you know, communicative process, development process. Would you agree, right? Absolutely, 100%. I mean, once you have the right designers, I, I don't believe anyone is, I mean, if you are talking to developers, if the designers are talking to developers on a constant basis, they will understand the expectations of the users and they will understand the expectations of what the developers want the user to do. Exactly. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things. And once again, like companies who are doing that, Casa, Coinbase and everyone, they far outweigh any, every other single one of them, right? Yeah. Even Binance to some, some extent provided mm -hmm. a far superior UX than uh, Cryptopia, Poloniex, and you know, it, it just boomed faster. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. The other thing is, which is very important, is actually listening to your users, yes. right? Versus holding on to your ego and say, ah, uh, they don't get it. 
right? If they don't get it, then no one will. No one will use it. Yeah. Right? You're talking about like them. seven to eight billion people, but okay, you know, like <laughs> if you really want mass right. adoption, we need to empathize. You know, we need to understand the the real needs and desires, you know, and, and right. of, of the users. What do they need? You know, what's the problem? 100%. What's the obstacle? What's you know what's the challenges they are up to? <laughs> okay. That's for sure. So it comes at the very like closed feedback where you're kind of like taking feedback from the users very early on. Instead of building on a silo, your product, just launch it out on GitHub, tweet about it, get feedback, build upon it, get feedback from your intended audience on what they feel about it. Now imagine like, for example, you, you, you know, you, you said you can't figure out Wasabi, right? Imagine, yeah. right, Wasabi in his early days tweeted, like, help us improve this product. How do you feel about it? And you said, you know, I, I don't understand anything. Yeah. Right. They would be in a much better place, I, which I believe uh, in terms of user experience. Right. But still, like it's a far, far superior product out there right now to bring privacy on Bitcoin. But it could have been in a much better position if, you know, we would have learned early on. Right. I can I, I actually saw so many comments on the Reddit where people were so confused because the password input box typed Chinese characters. Oh my God. They thought yeah, something was yeah. wrong. Yeah, I remember. Right? Yeah. It, uh -huh. Which is a real issue. So we recently fixed that into this recent, it, it, like uh, released two weeks ago, right? I mean, simple things like that should be taken up from the users very early on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, we touched upon uh, this other point uh, balancing use, use experience and security. Uh, with, where I mentioned Giacomo Zucco, where you know, talk about the trade-offs between security, privacy, and, and convenience. Uh, you want you want to talk about this explicitly about uh, um, uh, balancing user experience and security? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, I think one of the things here which is very important is, uh, and once again, this is from Lop James and Lop. He tweeted, you know, uh, the most secure way to store your Bitcoin is to generate a private key offline, send some Bitcoin to it, and then burn your private key. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is the most secure. Now, no one yeah. has a private key. You are 100% sure that this Bitcoin will never be stolen. But in terms of UX, <laughs> that's the worst thing because now you can't use your Bitcoin. But it's yeah. the most secure thing. And now yeah. the most usable and in terms of the best UX, it would be, you know, you generate your wallet and you give your private key to every single person on the internet. So, you know, you can basically never lose, you, you can basically always access your wallet. Mm -hmm. But in terms of security, you know for sure that within two seconds, your Bitcoin will be stolen. <laughs> so, which, which brings us to the point that security and user experience uh, is a spectrum. Yeah. And the perf yeah, there is no, I mean, perfect, but there's a balance, as you say, you know, there's a balance trade-off. Yeah. And this is Correct. the dilemma, I think, huh? Yeah. <laughs> right. So it, 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 so it's, there's no definite answer on what, you, what your application needs to do. Should it be more secure? Should it be, you know, more user focused, but less secure, right? Uh, or which one is, uh, which one do you, can you compromise more on or not, right? I think it really depends upon who is your intended audience. Right. So, for example, with, uh, uh, with, with Wasabi, our intended audience is everyone because privacy is a fundamental right. That was the whole point of my article that, you know, it's not just people who desperately need coin joints. It's not just dark market users. It's not just uh, someone who bought a Bitcoin without KYC and needs to tumble it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, uh, it's everyone because, you know, everyone should have uh, zero linked Bitcoin transactions. You know, for exactly. maximum fungibility. That should be the norm. That should right. be the, like the default norm. I mean, uh, sometimes you know, I wonder if uh, Bitcoin from the very beginning, theoretically, hypothetically, wouldn't would never have been even pseudonymous, but totally anonymous. Mm -hmm. And I think there is a reason to that. But uh, I think the attacks or the potential attacks or or uh, you know counter attacks by whatever nation states, governments, uh, agencies would have been ha would have happened much earlier if bitcoin yeah. transactions were fully anonymous yeah but that's I mean, what we're striving for but on the other on the other hand this is what we're striving for right what we are correct, correct. you know going for and this is what's happening in the background uh, in the, these developments correct uh, 
this is what I, we I want. think I think no one realized early on and everyone used to believe that it's anonymous anyway Mm-hmm. that uh, you don't have linked identities to wallet addresses you don't have a facebook account linked to your wallet you don't have your social security number linked so kind of everyone believed and that's what i believed when i came into bitcoin that oh it's totally anonymous it's only you know at the latest stages that we realized the downsides of having an open ledger mm-hmm. right and that's where monero and everything came in which is i think a learning process so yeah. it's it's good that i you know it's an open source project and you know there are I uh, improvement proposals being submitted every single day on improving the fungibility like the Dendelian protocol uh I don't know if you know that like I've heard of it but no, no idea what 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 that is <laughs> Yeah I mean in, like I'll be quick on that like for example once you transact like you send broadcast a transaction through a node right now that node knows what your IP is Mhm yeah right so yeah. if that node is uh, for example a malicious actor is using uh, is is that's that node belongs to a malicious actor he can actually link your transaction to your ip and then you know try to figure out who you were yeah so with dendelian your 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 transaction when it's broadcast hops on from one node to another to another but the previous node doesn't know is it coming from you or is it coming from another node mm-hmm. so there's no way to link who sent this transaction to the node So yeah. things like that like like small things but significant imp- consequences are being implemented at a and that's part of green as well then dalian framework has been significantly uh, has been implemented and that's where i actually see uh code and code some shit coins coming yeah. in because the lay the test net for bitcoin yeah. right so i mean it's a good thing that uh, you know you get to test everything out before you know m- moving to the big elephant in the room exactly um say um mike um what what's your what's your what's your vision what's your perspective what do you think is going to happen in the next few years because i did a video just out of a uh, blue you know out of spontaneous uh, video yesterday talked about half an hour about my ideal vision of uh, of a uh, you know super user friendly application with biometric uh, features Um yeah. now this is not really science fiction I I don't you know I don't believe in science fiction I think the technology is out there partially visible mm-hmm. or demonstrable but the other part of it is either you know in the corporate military industrial complex uh what if what if we had like an just for you know just for the simplicity of it just you know uh, storing or sending receiving uh bitcoin transactions via biometric features uh, beginning with fingerprint which already you have right we got a smartphone mm-hmm. we got the fingerprint we got the face id uh maybe even additionally iris uh the eye iris uh, uh um, scan and maybe even you know sort of a hormonal hormonal neurotransmitter detection i i <laughs> truly believe there are technologies out there the the question is when it's going to come out out of the military industrial complex into the you know into the realm of of bitcoin application or hardware devices software um do you think it would simplify all these processes or are many of yeah, these I, problems we're no, talking about i think i think you have a very valid point right and that's what companies like apple discovered early on that you know biometrics and face and uh, you know these are fingerprints face your eyes uh, Samsung has implemented the iris scanner as far as I know so you know the companies understand that these are really unique to individuals and can't be cloned or copied uh but at the same time you know uh, I I think it's a it's a, it's more of an abstraction uh, mm-hmm. it, this is not something that can be implemented on the protocol level into bitcoin but for example let's say you have a wallet that mm-hmm. generates those 24 words based upon your fingerprint yeah right <laughs> no, not even the yeah i mean you, those 24 words for example you somehow find out uh 24 different numbers between 1 to 2046 right so yeah. you use the dictionary i think the 24 words are generated out of 2046 words i could be wrong with that but let's say those are 2046 so you somehow figure out 24 different points on your fingerprint right and you now randomly pick 24 different words based on those points which are unique right so if you need to restore your wallet you scan your ping- finger and those 24 words come in or so a I combination you have- of you know or a combination like uh, of of voice recognition voice pattern or tone pattern mm-hmm. fingerprint face id 
iris scan and maybe something right. else is going to come along the way because I, I you know there is this this is what's so incredible in this technological era we're living in the technological pace of development i think it's going to come right. really fast by by right. order of magnitude right. in the next years and decades to come let's just say conservatively for sure no you're right and uh, which which is also a problem solving the ux right yeah. it won't make yeah. bitcoin blockchain any better it won't make it more scalable exactly. bitcoin will still be the same uh -huh. but the experience of holding your private key and you know doing you know broadcasting transactions with your face and your biometrics that's just far superior to anything so yeah which is which is something that i would like to believe as well along with you so yeah. All right. So rapid fire question at the end. What do you think is, uh, where are we, are we going to the moon or to Saturn or to, to galaxies <laughs> with, with Bitcoin? What, I mean, what, what's your realistic scenario for yourself, your perspective, vision? That's what I'm really interested in. How is the development going to come, you know, in the next few years? I mean, it's going to it's going to be crazy, I think. You know, just, just the lightning network or the development mm -hmm. in the, you know, technological sector. Where, where, where do you see Bitcoin and the whole ecosystem, the monitor root layering? Mm -hmm. uh, I think because this is such a scarce, I mean, a lot of people say that, you know, Satoshi intended it to be a cash and, you know, uh, some, like it was supposed to be peer to peer cash. So it's going to be used like cash. Uh, but what they forget is that not almost in 99% of the cases, your users use your products in different ways than you expect, right? So if you detach yourself from re romanticizing on the idea of cash, right, then only you can open your mind to see now what is the world using Bitcoin for? And what I see right now is not a lot of people want to spend their Bitcoins, yeah. including myself, yeah. right? So of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, we just want to keep hobby, holding on to it. Yeah. Right, we just want to hold it on to for dear life right mm -hmm. and which makes me believe because it is a scarce resource and there's only going to be a limited number of bitcoins that it might end up being a reserve currency for the world and it might end up being something that stands along with gold it can't replace gold gold is like five thousand years old yeah or, you know if it replaces gold at least not in our time yeah. like not not in our lives it could be like 500 years down 500 years down the line or something like that but the other use case, uh, which is really interesting for me is, for example, once you have colonized Mars, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, how, do, how, how, do you, how do you take money on Mars, right? You can't set up printing machines. Why would you do that, right? It's going to be so expensive, right? If you're printing paper over there, and how do you beam uh, money using banks uh, in a trustless manner? Yeah. Right. And so by the way, I, I mean, think, what are other extraterrestrial civilizations going to really exchange with us? Gold? I mean, I don't think so. Paper money, fiat? Uh, <laughs> and, you know, this is the question. Right. You know? I mean, this is so overrated. Gold is so overrated, you know, as, as you somehow, I think, implied us. And it's, it's way too overrated. What are we going to do with gold? Yeah. I can't go to the grocery and scrap yeah. off some, you know, dust of gold. It's so... Irrelevant. Right. And you never know how, when the supply is going to blow up. What, exactly. What if we... Uh, a gold we found a gold asteroid and we start mining on it right? oh we don't even have to go to the asteroids i think i mean right. just just the, the the development in the technology because yeah we need to put time energy and technology into the mm -hmm. mining of gold what if we find it in the you know surface uh well, not the surface but Correct. the you know uh, the, uh, what do you call it the bottom of the oceans okay. what For if we sure. find a technological process to exponential like increase the stock to flow you know like the stock which right. is, exists like two hundred thousand tons all of a sudden we don't uh -huh. even know i mean that's a qu my question do uh, uh, do we really have two hundred thousand tons which is the official number or do we have way way more tons of right. gold like we don't know no one knows right for sure but we know so there's 21 million bitcoins like in, in correct, correct. absolute scarcity for sure no, for sure. So that's what I'm betting on, like uh, gold 2.0 for millennials, honestly, and which might end up being a reserve currency. And I think, you know, if one of the countries, one of the big countries does it before anyone, right, everyone is going to follow the suit. So if let's say, you know, Russia does it. So, you know, as soon as the U.S. knows, you know, they are going to convert some of their gold or, you know, just print more money to buy Bitcoin, inflate the prices like they do with real estate, right? Print more money, buy more real estate and, you know, it goes up. So who knows? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Yeah. So, uh, Mike, do you have any final thoughts or, or information for, for, for my listeners and viewers uh, where they can find you? What should, what should they educate themselves about? What should they read? Uh, what's your, I mean, I'm going to put mm -hmm. all your infos in the show notes anyway, but any, any you know, essential information you want to give away? Yeah, I mean, uh, if anyone wants to get involved into this space, I think now is the time. Mm -hmm. to provide abstraction level solutions on top of Bitcoin. I'm more excited about the abstraction layers than the technological layer. I think there's a lot of work happening at the technology layer anyway, right? And I think now is the right time. So, you know, it would be great if, uh, you know, if you guys can uh, hit me up on Twitter. I'm all ears for new product ideas. I'm available to work on them and we can probably collaborate on something for sure. Beautiful. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, we're gonna do some shout outs and mentions, but we already mentions like uh, Noparo, Adam Fitcher, um, uh, you know, Elena Franova from Casa, Anthony Pampliana, Giacomo Zucco. Do you want to like uh, mention any other people we should we should mention in the in the Twitter posts? Uh, Peter, Peter Which, McCormack. Oh, of course, yeah, Peter McCormack. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. And uh, He's a wonderful uh, we guy. can. And Craig Wright. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. Is it a real one? Really? <laughs> I'm not sure whether yeah. this is going to be taken seriously, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy is, I don't know. He's, he needs help. Um, yeah. Well, Mike, thank you so much. It was really a pleasure. Yeah. I learned, I might listen to learn so much and you got a great, I think a great insight into what's going on in this, in this whole, uh, you know, Bitcoin mm -hmm. space and uh, hardless space and the U UX UI uh, design, um, you know, dilemma uh, with the, you know, conjunction with the developers. So uh, it was really, really overdue to talk about these points. And uh, yeah, right. I want to thank you for your time and get you on yeah, hopefully for a enough. panel discussion in the future. Perfect. That sounds very good. Thank you so much for having me. It's been, uh, it's been my honor. Yeah, all right, Mike. Talk to you okay. soon. All right. Have a good time. Sure. Thank you. Bye-bye. You Bye-bye. Welcome to the podcast show by Kay Vandavani, The Total Connector, Total Bitcoin, Awesome Economics, The Hardest and Scarcest Money Ever Created in Human History, Bitcoin.